Hey guys, if you're confused by the title of the video, then you're rightfully confused. This video will be broken down into many different short stories. All of them were too short to have their own dedicated video, so I decided to compile all these little tales and thoughts I have into one commentary. I hope you enjoy. There's some interesting stuff in here, so consider watching until the end. You might just find something you like. But, of course, we're starting off, The man who dreamt he was a butterfly, and it became a religion. In my history class, we were learning about China in the early ages of 300 BC. But once upon a time, in China, there was this man called Lao Tse, and he wrote a story called the Tao Te Ching. Now, the Tao Te Ching is a very sacred text for the religion of Taoism. Now, Taoism, whether it be spelled with a T or a D, is one of the th is one of the two main Chinese religions at the time of 300 BC, and as of that, we were learning about it in class. Now, for my history homework, we have to look out through a bunch of readings, all with interesting facts like trying to imitate water or believing everything and everyone has a soul that can be purified. Taoism is very nice. It's a very nice religion. However, there is one story in particular about the guy, a guy named Chong Tzu. I'm, I'm sorry for butchering all these names, by the way. And he, you know, he had a dream once. Yeah, he had a dream. He dreamt he was a butterfly. Why? Nobody knows. He just was a butterfly. And in his dream, he was flying around, not realizing it was a butterfly. And then when he woke up, he's like, wow, I was a butterfly. And then this sparked revolutionary ways of thought. As he then began to question, am I really a man? Or am I just a butterfly dreaming that I am a man? I, I think you're I think you're a man, too. I, I, think, I think you're a man. Has anyone ever told you the meaning of the word scapegoat? We use scapegoat as a term to refer to something or someone that we can latch an excuse onto. Like if we, if I broke my mother's vase, I can blame it on my brother, hence he is the scapegoat. Well there's actually a very traumatizing story behind how this meant, how this came to be. And well that story is very simple. A long time ago there was religion, wow who would have thought? And usually people sinned because people are bad creatures and they when they sinned they said oh hell no God's not gonna be happy with me now that is not good at all that's why I said hell oh hell no haha <laughs> get it cuz it's hell okay never mind so when they sinned what they would do well they would take a goat a, a very innocent scapegoat if you will and just a goat and then they chucked it off a cliff yeah they, they just took goats and they chucked them off cliffs to, you know, in tribute for their sins, to cleanse their souls for the god. I don't know what they thought they were accomplishing by throwing goats off cliffs. Like, it's not like God's going to be like, oh, they're killing wildlife. No hell for you. But, you know, that's how the term scapegoat came to be. So, hooray. The color blue. It's a color we've always looked at, and I guess none of us have ever been really thankful for the color blue. Like, you've never looked at a color and said, Wow, that is such a beautiful color. I am so glad I have a name for that color. Well, fun fact, the Bible and the Odyssey never mention the color blue. I believe the writer of the Odyssey described the ocean as dark wine. And I'm just kind of stunned. If you translate the Bible or you look through any Bible word finder, you're not finding the word blue. It's just not there. Why? Well, I don't know. There's many odd stories on the internet on how the ancient people didn't have any use for the color blue. And they just didn't have it for, as such. But no, there's an ocean. There's water. Why wouldn't you have a word for that color? It's the color blue. And then this got me thinking, what even is color? And I found on this same website a very good description of color that I think is quite intriguing and fascinating. And that is, we look at color as the color, colored pencil or marker that we would use to paint it in a picture. If that doesn't make any sense, we look at the sky as blue because we would use a blue marker to paint the sky. And now this is a very cool thought experiment because one man decided to raise his daughter without ever, without ever telling her 
about the color blue. And then one day, when she was 10 years old, still never heard of the color blue before, he asked her, what color is the sky? And she said she didn't know. She said there was no color. And isn't that amazing? To her, because there wasn't any color to identify the sky with, she wouldn't use anything to paint the sky in a picture. She just said no color. But there is a color, because we've trained to see those color pigments and called it blue. Which is why another really similar and linked experiment where you show you a circle of green squares and one is slightly off shaded. People from South Africa could find the off shaded one right away because they had a name for that color of green. However, us, it took me a while to figure out to distinct the shades of green and actually find the odd square out. So I think if we don't define colors, there's colors right now that we could be looking at and we just don't have a name for. And I think that's amazing. Like the color white could have so many subcolors that we don't know about. And only we just see nothing because we don't have a name. And I will never know until someone decides to figure that out. And how do they define colors in the first place? Well, I don't know either. Maybe white is just white. But maybe there's a name for that certain shade of gray that's faded that we just don't have a name for. I think it's amazing, actually. I always thought there was a really lazy aura around the name USA. Okay, you named it the United States of America. You could have as well just named it the Combined Counties of America. And nobody would have known the difference. But after looking around, people get lazier. Literally fireplace. I mean, how are it? Like, uh, come on. I guess crafting table is okay. But fireplace. Like, can you even get lazier than that? Let's continue. Ant eater. It eats ants. Ah uh, ha Very original. This one flies. Let's call it a fly. What are these orange fruits we can eat? Oh, um. Oranges. Of course. Wow, this keeps food fresh? I, g I guess I'll call it a fresher. Damn. Woo. That is literally the most intelligent thing ever. In German, elevator is Aufzug. I, I, I'm not German, I'm sorry. But it literally means upward pull. A man fishes. What are we going to call him? Ah, a fisherman. I guess that one is okay. But people could really be better at naming things. I think it's hilarious, though. Well, I guess that's the end of all my quote-unquote shower thoughts. Or my weird random stories. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and the Skywars footage to go along with it. I'll see y'all next time, tomorrow. <laughs> Peace out. Bye. Thank you so much.